Good morning. Good morning. Uh, most of you know I'm Sylvia Lipinski. I'm a deacon in the Chesterfield Church, and I'm very happy to be here today. A um, couple announcements. First of all, thank you very much, Patrick and Dana and Emily and Linda, for making my job so easy today. I just have to stand up here and talk. Um, everybody knows no church next week, parade happening in Williamsburg. But I'm also going to do a little self-promotion for next weekend. Patrick will be entertaining on Friday night uh, where the fireworks are happening. And my band is playing Saturday 11 to 2 as part of the Saturday all-day festival. We'll be in the Bergie Brews Garden. What time? 11 to 2. Uh, and there's, there's bands all day. We start 11 to 2, and then Fred Goodhue's band comes on, and then uh, another band called Wild Bill and the Flying Sparks comes on at 6. And then Patrick again on Sunday after the parade um, at the Legion, right, at the Chicken Barbecue at 1 o'clock. So there's a lot of fun stuff happening next week. I hope some of you can make it. Um, I think that's all the announcements, so if I could ask Patrick to play us a little introit. Oh yes, I'm sorry, Larry has. Daria? Daria? Thank you. 
Thank you, Daria. We need to split ourselves into 12 people for that day, don't we? <laughs> All right, Patrick will give us an intro. Thank you. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on a cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sins. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great. My soul, my Savior God, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his Son, not spare, send him. I scarce can take it in. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior. How great thou art, how great thou art. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Please join me now singing hymn number 537.
join me saying the invocation in unison. It's found on page 710 of the hymnal. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Let the day come, Lord, when our world's misery will find your mercy. Let the day come when our poverty will find your riches. Let the day come when our path will find the way to your house. Let the day come when our tears will find your smile. Let the day come when our joy will find your heaven. Let the day come when your church will find the kingdom. May you be blessed, Father, for that day when our eyes will find your face. Throughout all the time of our lives, you have not ceased to come before us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our brother. Come, Lord Jesus, come. The Old Testament readings uh, would begin in you know, Genesis uh, chapter 5, verses 28 and 29. When Lamech, a son of Methuselah, had lived 182 years, he became the father of a son and called his name Noah, saying, Out of the ground which the Lord has cursed, this one shall bring us relief from our work and from the toil of our hands. The next reading is from Lamentations. And uh, chapter 3, and I forgot the numbers. 21 to 23. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. May God bless these readings. Yeah, 
follow me. I'll show the way. He by my side this very day. Hallelujah. Our New Testament readings um, come from two places. The first is the epistle of Paul to the Hebrews, chapter 11, a single verse. And I'm reading from King James. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And our second reading comes from the revelation of St. John the Divine. Once again, I'm reading from King James. And I'm reading chapter 21, verses 1 to 4. And this is about the new Jerusalem. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself, shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So ends our reading. Thanks be to God.
be together in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we sit here today in this quiet time of the liturgical year, let us think about the small child who came not as a conquering hero, but as the Messiah, come to show the way and forgive our sins so we might have eternal life. We have celebrated his birth, his life here on earth, his crucifixion, his resurrection, and Pentecost. We're now in that period when the disciples had been told to go forth and spread the news, build the church. They did not understand everything, and so it is today. We still do not understand your ways. We struggle with the ravages of illness, poor decisions, battles among your people. It is sometimes hard to find the hope that was so alive when Christ was born. We ask for your guidance as we strive every day to walk with you and follow the truths you laid out for us. Gracious God, there is someone close to us who needs our thoughts and prayers this morning. Let us spend a few silent minutes praying that they feel surrounded by our love and our prayers. Lord, we ask that you help us find the hope in the life you have provided us, that you show us how to be kind and gentle with one another, because we don't know what others are dealing with. When we pray for others and with others, remind us that silence is sometimes the best prayer of all, because you already know what is in our hearts. You have told us that where two or more are gathered in your name, you are with us. So today, let us feel your grace surrounding us as we pray the words we learn from your son, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now sing hymn number 540. <laughs>
Please be seated. I asked our readers today, Roy and Daria, to read some scripture that might show us how the Bible promises hope all throughout. And the passage from Genesis didn't really mention hope, but if you look at it more closely, you'll see that Lamech named his son Noah. Noah comes from a Hebrew word that means rest. And remember that Lamech lived in an evil time before the flood. And given the biblical ages back then, there were some people still alive who remembered the times of Adam and were aware of the contrast in their lives. Noah's father predicted that in contrast to all the evil they were surrounded by, Noah would stand for righteousness and bring rest and peace in the midst of God's judgment. In other words, hope that mankind would give up the evil ways and return to God's ways. In the Lamentations reading, if you read the first 20 ver verses before the part Roy read, Jeremiah has spent all those previous verses moaning and groaning about a whole bunch of stuff. And then finally he recalled something that brings him his renewed hope. He remembers that it is by the grace of God, by God's goodness, that we are here, that we have salvation. All the gifts and blessings we have are because God wants us to have them. We don't earn them. We can't earn them. There are things we have to do. Yep, there are. We have to repent. We have to ask God to come into our hearts. We have to ask him to help us live the life that he intended for us. To place our hope in him. And in return, we get the hope of an eternal future with God. So let's think about that word hope for a minute because I think all of us could use a little word of encouragement uh, these days. When I was thinking about this message for today, even though the word hope isn't really mentioned a lot in most of the modern translations of the Bible, it's really there. I'm doing a chronological reading of the Bible and all of a sudden, like, you know, it's when you're wishing for a car and you want a certain car, a certain model, a certain color, and suddenly that's all you see on the highway. All I was seeing in the Bible was messages about hope. Messages to convey the hope that comes from God's love for us. But then let's think about what exactly is hope. Um, and I see we have a couple young people in church today. When, when we're young, our hope is that toy catalog. Um, Oh, I hope I get this for my birthday. I hope I get that for Christmas. And when we get older, hope turns into, I hope I pass this test. I hope they like me at my new school. And later, I hope that special someone says yes. And do we think biblical hope is the same as the run of the mill? <laughs> I hope I have enough gas to get home tonight. So I, I mentioned the word repent a few minutes ago. And repent means turn away from, make a change. So when you look up the meaning of the word hope, there are actually similarities to the word repentance in the root word. <laughs> Most of us had Mrs. Curtis or someone like her in high school. We get a little fixated on, on language. In the Indo-European root, we find that hope means bend or go in a different way. And the Hebrew and Greek background means strong and confident expectation. That's the one I really like. I, I could rest in those words with all that's going on around me. Hope for the people of the Old Testament was the promise of the king. And in their world, that meant a conquering hero who would defeat their enemies. Today, we sometimes, and I probably should say often, pin our hopes on something worldly. We want, we hope, economics will change. We hope politics will change. Sometimes we hope our jobs will change. Most of us hope our kids will change in one way or another. But I would suggest that's not really biblical hope. God has promised us hope, and the strength of that expectation 
our confidence and our belief in that expectation, expectation is faith. When Noah sent the dove away from the ark to search for signs of life, signs of dry land, he had hope based on God's promises to him that the dove would return with a twig or a leaf. And when we offer up a prayer to God, it's not much different than Noah sending out the dove into the unknown, but very certain of the destination. And maybe no results the first time, as we know from scripture, but the dove will return. Our prayer will be answered in God's time, in God's way. So then we look at the New Testament readings from earlier. And Hebrews 11.1 1 is telling us what faith can do for us. It says that the things hoped for are as real as if we already had them. And it tells us that the unseen blessings of Christianity are real. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. Being convinced of that which we can't see. Our hope is based on confidence and not just wishful thinking. In the passage from Revelation that Daria read, I, just, well, I want us to think about those verses with this idea. That heaven that is in front of us is not the old heaven. It is new. Heaven is about God. It has not very much to do with us. It's about him being so gracious and loving that he brings us home to be with him. But we need to be prepared for that. We need to treasure God. We need to live godly. And we need to serve him with thankfulness. Paul tells us in Romans 15 that the words written in former times, what we would now refer to as the Old Testament, were written for us to learn from so that through endurance, and encouragement we can have hope and first Peter the first chapter says nothing outside can provide the hope that the Bible offers all who trust in the person and the work of Jesus but I <clears throat> I want you to understand that this isn't just nice sounding platitudes that yeah yeah the Bible says we should have hope based on faith but what if I don't feel it it's just not there for me Max Lucado, who's written, I don't know, like a thousand books, <laughs> said in one of his many books that sometimes it feels like hope got on a train for the West Coast and hasn't been heard from in weeks. And I know we've all had times like that. We look around, <clears throat> friends and family have absolutely devastating things to deal with. So from whence comes my hope? So I'm going to tell you a little story that you all probably know. <clears throat> particularly everyone in the choir will know. In 1871, the Great Chicago Fire happened, and a wealthy real estate investor lost most of his wealth. It was barely a year since his only son of five children had died of scarlet fever. So the man sent his grieving wife and the remaining four children to sail to England on the most luxurious ship of the time, the SS Villa du Havre, an iron steamship that had been converted from a paddle steamer that ran back and forth between New York City and the coast of France. En route, the ship was hit by a British vessel and sank, killing most on board, including Horatio Spafford's four young daughters, his four remaining children. And when he got the word from his wife days later, after she had been rescued and landed in Wales, and I can't even imagine how many days, and not like there were cell phones or computers or telephones, any way to communicate. Horatio set sail to join her, and the captain of his ship showed him the very spot where the tragedy had taken place, where his daughters had died. Mr. Spafford was a Christian, and he was filled with hope as they stopped over that spot. I can't even imagine that. I can't. We lost a little grandbaby uh, this year at, at 52 days old, and I, I can't imagine being so filled with hope, but Spafford was. He was filled with hope and comforted because the girls were all together with their Lord, and Horatio knew they would one day be reunited. And he wrote the words to, It is well with my soul, which was later set to music and became the hymn we're going we're gonna to sing in a, in a couple minutes. 
I pray daily to have that kind of hope. There's nothing in my life that comp compares to the tragedy that the Spaffords went through. But I know many of us have faced and are even now facing terrible situations. And my prayer for all of us is that we find the hope through faith that will sustain us. The hope through faith that sustained Horatio Spafford. I don't know of any other way that there is for Christians, if not the hope that comes from faith in God. Amen. And now let us sing that hymn, number 561. And now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself, God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope with grace, may he comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Go in peace.